It's ticking towards midnight on December 31st, and an undeniable excitement is bubbling up all across Denmark. Suddenly, all at once, the sky explodes into a kaleidoscope of colors. Cause baby, you're a firework. But what makes Denmark so incredibly explosive at New Year's Eve? Look, all around the world, wherever I've lived, there have been fireworks on New Year's, but Denmark takes things next level. Here, fireworks aren't just a spectacle, they're a deeply ingrained part of the New Year's celebration. But this is no ordinary love of pyrotechnics. In Denmark, people are expected to spend over 5 million Danish kroner on fireworks this year. That's 67 million euro in a country of under 6 million people. So what's the reason behind this explosive tradition? Is it a mere love of the spectacle, a simple case of human monkey brain liking big explosion and bright color, or is there more to this Danish year-end ritual? Today in this video, we're going to examine the historical and cultural reasons that Danes go so crazy for New Year's Eve fireworks. The fascination and regulation of fireworks in Denmark have deep historical roots. The story begins as far back as the 17th century, where one of the earliest documented instances of New Year's fireworks in Denmark was recorded in the year 1668. A tailor named Kleschen Simonsen was punished for firing a gun in accordance with tradition to celebrate the New Year. This incident recorded in the Elsinore Town Council Minutes highlights the existence of early celebratory gunfire, fireworks, or some kind of explosion as part of Danish New Year's customs. As a side note, one not-so-fun fact is that Simonson was actually tortured for this act. As quoted, it says, As a punishment for firing his gun, Simonson was placed on a so-called wooden horse. This is a torture device that is extremely uncomfortable to sit on because the horse's back has a sharp point that the victim is forced to sit on. This could result in serious injuries to the crotch and could leave the victim unable to walk without pain. Now, it's entirely possible that this is not the true origin of fireworks in Denmark, as Simonson himself stated that he was just acting according to tradition. But whether or not this was a wider national tradition or just a small local tradition has been lost to history. But we'll fast forward now to the modern era. Fireworks have evolved from simple gunshots, which admittedly would probably be even worse in the modern age, to a sophisticated display of light, color, and noise. However, with their evolution came the need for regulation. Denmark, like many European nations, has faced the challenge of balancing the public's love for fireworks with safety and environmental concerns. These came to a head on a cold winter's day in 2004. November 3rd of 2004 began like any other day in Seest a peaceful suburb of Kuding, Denmark. But it was a day that would leave an indelible mark on the town and significantly influence Denmark's approach to firework safety. The main importer of fireworks in Denmark was at the center of this tragic event. Storing 284 net tons of fireworks, the company was operating within the legal limit of 300 tons. Little did anyone know though that disaster was looming. The catastrophe began with a seemingly small mistake. Two employees accidentally dropped a box of fireworks inside this container. The minor accident set off a chain reaction that would lead to a disaster. A fire ignited that spread uncontrollably whilst emergency services rushed to the scene, thinking it was a simple container fire. But they were soon overwhelmed by the intensity of the blaze. With no option left, they had to retreat as the situation escalated. The explosion that followed was devastating. One firefighter tragically lost his life and numerous others from the rescue team and local residents were injured. The explosion damaged over 2,000 buildings, rendering many uninhabitable and the total cost of the damages inflicted was estimated at around 100 million euro. The cease disaster was a wake-up call for Denmark. It highlighted in the clearest way possible the potential dangers of fireworks and the need for more stringent safety measures. In response to the disaster, Denmark aligned with the wider directives of the European Union and implemented stricter controls over the sale and the use of fireworks. The EU's Pyrotechnic Articles Directive was initiated in 2007 and was reinforced in 2013. It played a crucial role in reshaping fireworks regulation. The directive introduced a classification system for fireworks, dividing them into several categories based on their potential hazard and the level of expertise required to handle them. The most potent category, F4, was restricted exclusively to professionals. This meant that only trained and licensed individuals could handle the most powerful and potentially dangerous fireworks. 
Denmark adopted these EU guidelines into national law, and Denmark took these laws further than most other EU states. Now, the only period in which fireworks can be legally purchased in Denmark is between the 15th of December and the 31st of December each year. And the public are only allowed to use these fireworks between the 27th of December and the 31st of December each year. And even then, the higher category F3 and F4 fireworks are completely restricted from sale to the general public. So, could this be the reason for Denmark's ferocious firework fur? Is it just a case of people wanting what they can't have? Well, contrary to what you might think based on how the sky lights up like an 80s East German disco between Christmas and New Year's, recent polls have shown that public opinion is actually against expanding the availability of fireworks. Only 12.6% of members of the public that were polled supported expanding the current legal firework usage window. And a slim majority, 50.8% of Danes that were polled, think that the private firework usage should be restricted to just two days per year on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. This initiative is currently moving through Parliament and could be in place by next year at New Year's. But why, you might ask, did Danes have such a burning love affair with fireworks in the first place? Well, let's light the fuse on this mystery. Consider a typical Danish winter. It's so dark that you might wonder if the sun is on permanent sabbatical. But what a better way to light up the night with a sky full of fireworks. Plus, let's not forget the social aspect. Danes, as you may know, love hygge, or gathering together in what we consider coziness. Danes will find any excuse for this kind of get-together, and what's cozier than standing outside in freezing temperatures and watching things explode in the sky? I can't think of anything. Compared to their European neighbors who might prefer a more quiet toast indoors, Danes like to go all out. But some would say that maybe they've taken it a little too far. Firework-related injuries have increased 12% in the past year, from 174 to 195, of which 25% of those injured were children under the age of 15. Now, these numbers are greatly reduced from the days before the cease disaster, but the increasing rates could point towards why the general public sentiment in Denmark is the way that it is regarding fireworks. It's almost hard to believe that over 50% of the Danish population support more stringent firework controls, though. The amount of fireworks launched almost has to be seen to be believed. But I guess big, colorful sky explosions are one situation where the vocal minority can be really vocal due to the nature of fireworks being, you know, quite loud. Public firework displays, often organized by the municipal governments, have become a preferred way for many Danes to enjoy these fireworks. These professionally managed events are carefully planned to ensure safety. They involve coordinated efforts from various authorities, including emergency services, to create a maximum amount of safety for the spectators. The fireworks used in these displays are handled by licensed professionals, and they adhere to very strict safety protocols. More importantly for the general public who are spectating, these displays are licensed to use the more dangerous but much more spectacular F3 and F4 class of fireworks. In Copenhagen, for example, there's a display at Tivoli Gardens each year on New Year's. It marks the end of Tivoli's season and is a bit of a centerpiece of Copenhagen's New Year's celebrations. These shows are famed for their artistic choreography of light and color, and it makes sense it draws thousands of spectators who all gather to witness the spectacle. For them, the importance of Tivoli's fireworks transcends the visual. It's a magical start to the year, and it binds together the past with the present and ignites aspirations for the future. Alongside regulation, there's been a drive towards public education about firework safety. Campaigns and initiatives aim to inform and educate the general public, especially young people, about the safe handling and usage of fireworks. This approach seeks to foster a culture of responsibility and caution, reducing the likelihood of accidents and injuries in the future. And the increase in popularity of silent fireworks in Denmark in recent years may be a sign of this change actually happening. As Denmark continues to cherish its firework traditions, the balance between celebration and safety remains a priority. While the future of fireworks for the general public may currently lie in the balance, the night sky will still light up with the dazzle of fireworks, but now with an added layer of caution and care. It's a testament to the evolving relationship between a nation and its beloved pyrotechnic displays, a relationship that's as dynamic as it is bright. 
And New Year's Eve isn't the only holiday that you may be interested in. Now, Denmark has a lot of very unique traditions, especially around the holidays throughout the year. But if you want to understand more about those, you'll have to watch this video right here about all of the holidays and the unique ways that Denmark celebrates some holidays that you may know and may not know. But thanks for watching today and Happy New Year. Hi, hi.